The legendary splashdown of SpaceX Dragon spacecraft during the Polaris Dawn mission is truly one of the most epic scenes in human spaceflight. But at the same time, it's also a bitter pill for NASA, meaning that their era, old space, has gone. Perhaps the national agency could not have imagined that the private mission it despised as incompetent to rescue an iconic Hubble observatory would be so successful. Will NASA change its mind? How does Elon Musk react to this? Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. While some would like to argue that Polaris Dawn is merely a billionaire's joyride, the truth is the Polaris team has reaped many things that have never been done before and demonstrated to NASA how wrong the agency was in looking down the potential of private missions. Certainly, you may remember that in 2022, Jared Isaacman, sponsoring Polaris Dawn, basically said he'd foot the bill to take a maintenance crew aboard SpaceX Dragon to NASA's Space Hubble Telescope. After three decades of serving as a prime observer in space, NASA's Hubble telescope alarms that it will retire around 2034. That's when the telescope, which is slowly drifting down toward Earth, is expected to burn up as it plunges through the atmosphere. Within the Polaris Dawn framework, he would partner with SpaceX to perform a boost to Hubble and possibly service it like NASA used to do, all for free. This aims to buy the telescope more operational time. However, NASA officials and study reviewers are not yet sold on the need for it. This mainly comes from the high risk of the mission, including the technical concern. The SpaceX capsule has no airlock. Once the astronauts step outside, the entire interior will have to be depressurized and exposed to the vacuum of space when the hatch opens. NASA, by then, raised the skepticism about the reliability of SpaceX's new EVA suit. No robotic arm is also a big deal. This component was equipped on the space shuttle, helping to retrieve the telescope and firmly mount the instrument onto a platform in the shuttle's huge cargo bay. The astronaut could use this platform to revolve and position the telescope to make their spacewalking easier. Dragons do not have such parts, so they will float in space and make work difficult. Furthermore, it can cause fatal accidents for astronauts in risky environments like space. In terms of humans, NASA supposed that a new and private mission like Polaris had not been proven. The agency is very familiar with the Hubble rescue missions with the dedicated vehicle and experienced astronauts. Not by accident, why the five Hubble servicing missions flown by NASA astronauts were some of the most prestigious space missions ever. Clearly, they do not dare to risk its expensive telescope on a new and private mission like Polaris. The failure could threaten Hubble's 10 more years of science that astronomers currently expect to enjoy, but now NASA might change its mind. Greg Autry, an American space policy expert and also an author of books such as Red Moon Rising, a new entrepreneurial dynamic, or Death by China, has recently given his own thoughts. So who still believes that Rook Isaacman couldn't successfully service the Hubble Space Telescope on a SpaceX mission. Previous arguments, including Hubble's relatively high altitude and the lack of spacesuits and spacewalk experience on Dragon, were just smashed. The private mission took our spaceship farther than any human has gone since the last Apollo mission over 50 years ago. It reached the Van Allen radiation belt at altitudes about 700 kilometers, whereas Hubble orbits the Earth at an altitude of about 547 kilometers. They tested SpaceX's brand new spacesuit in space carefully because this is the suit's first generation, which is only used for test, so we should not expect perfection from it. The data collected from the test will form the basis for the development of future versions, which will certainly be much better. However, at least it can meet the basic requirements of an astronaut suit, such as safety. Not to mention that the SpaceX suit has several advantages over NASA's Apollo suit, among which is flexibility. It stands out by the new joint designs remaining soft until pressurized, while maintaining mobility, which is really decent dexterity in the fingers, very good mobility, and good flexibility, even down to the knees and waist. Obviously, for difficult, highly skilled tasks like repairing Hubble, the flexibility of the SpaceX suit would increase the wearer's mobility and reduce danger. On the other hand, given Hubble's value, it's no surprise that NASA would be hesitant to entertain the idea of outsourcing. After careful consideration, the Hubble team decided to operate Hubble using a single gyro, and the other functioning gyro will be kept in reserve for future 
future use. The storied telescope has traditionally operated using six gyroscopes, which are part of a system that controls and determines the direction the telescope is pointed in. Over time, some of the gyros have stopped functioning, but three have remained operational, making no change to how the telescope operates until now. Later, one of the three remaining gyroscopes returned faulty readings that caused the telescope to enter safe mode multiple times and cease its observations of the universe. The team has long considered shifting the telescope to one gyro mode to prolong its lifespan after developing the plan more than 20 years ago. NASA's safety solution has Greg Autry questioning it. Has NASA become too risk adverse? Talking about this, Jared Isaacman previously argued that that risk is being taken by his group with the plans to proceed with private spacewalks no matter what. I would say like, this is beyond logical. This is so obvious to do, said Isaacman. And if it's not, it's purely political on why it wouldn't be done. Regarding the lack of hardware, keep in mind that during the shuttle's final servicing mission on Hubble, astronauts added a ring-like piece of docking hardware to the telescope to make it easier for some future spacecraft to latch on. Thanks to that, SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft would approach and dock with Hubble using this ring left. According to the National Agency, the telescope is operating well. In September, it captured a stunning new image of the barred spiral galaxy, NG GC 1559. As amazing as it is, there's no denying the fact that Hubble has limitations in its sensitivity and the range of wavelengths it can observe. The James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, launched in December 2021, is designed to operate mainly in the infrared spectrum, which allows it to see through cosmic dust and observe distant galaxies that are not visible to Hubble. JWST features a 6.5-meter mirror, making it far more sensitive than Hubble, but not focused on visible light light observations. However, while JWST expands our capabilities into infrared astronomy, there remains a significant gap in high-resolution imaging within the visible spectrum. Musk acknowledged this and called for a new telescope that to be a new visible spectrum space telescope with far larger aperture. Of course, to make it possible, it would be better if we use a large and low-cost rocket to deliver the telescope. In a tweet posted in July 2021, SpaceX's CEO suggested that the ship itself could serve as the structure for a new giant telescope with 10 times the resolution of NASA's Hubble, an indication that the billionaire still has plenty of big ideas left for the company's spacecraft. The idea of turning a Starship spacecraft into a massive space telescope was first suggested to him by Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory astrophysicist Saul Perlmutter. With Starship's 9 meters of diameter, it could accommodate a range of telescope designs, such as the James Webb Space Telescope, which could fit inside without having to fold up its six five-meter wide mirror. A huge rocket like Starship is capable of launching a thicker and heavier telescope's mirrors, meaning they would be easier to manufacture and polish. In addition, spacecraft designers can add larger solar panels for additional power, which allows the spacecraft to use cheaper electronics with more redundancy. Besides that, in order to send any telescopes into deep space toward the L2 Lagrange point, where they would observe the universe far away from interference from Earth, Starship would need to be refueled in orbit. This could contaminate a telescope's sensitive mirrors, or even the telescope could be at risk of damage caused by extreme temperature swings within the time of waiting for its Starship transport to be refueled. Clearly, SpaceX will consider this possibility, but in advance, they need to demonstrate Starship's in-orbit propellant transfer in Artemis 3. Once they master this technique, SpaceX can go further with the astronomical mission. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.